What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the things that I needed or I would have liked to have during my home birth. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I had a peaceful, blissful, beautiful home birth and because I have a list of all of the things that I used or the things that I wish I would have had during my home birth. I say that to say that I had all the time that I needed to purchase or prepare my home for a home birth and I had my son in the bathtub. The first thing you're going to need is a birthing place. I personally didn't know where I wanted to give birth 100%, I left room for whatever my baby was gonna tell me to do. I wanted to give birth in the water, and I thought I was gonna give birth in the water, and I ended up giving birth in the water, but I prepared for both. So I would say is you definitely need a pool, bath, mattress protector. The mattress protector was great because I actually thought I was in my birthing process, and then I felt like he wasn't coming, so I got up and I tried to go to sleep and then I had to get back. So a mattress protector is great because if you do release any type of fluid or anything like that, you can just literally bundle up all of that and toss it and throw it away, or you can wash it and it's waterproof and it's good for things like that. When you're in your birthing process, you kind of just, I mean, at least for me, I kind of just let loose and I didn't really care what was gonna happen to some of my things. So if you're getting in and out of the bath and you want somewhere to let to rest or to lay, um, having a mattress protector is great because it will not ruin your mattress. I have two pools that I did not use because I just prefer to use a bathtub. It was obviously less work instead of filling up a bathtub with a hose. I personally hate cold water. So having the plumbing system and having it be able to drain was just more ideal for me. The next thing that is also very important is comfortable clothes and a robe. Because I was in and out of the bath and into the bed, having something that I can just put over my body was really important because I wasn't trying to dry off with a towel. Sometimes you want to go get up and you want to eat a plate of food, at least for me. I was getting up, I was eating food, um, I wanted something to drink, I was walking around, I changed my clothes multiple times, but the thing that was most comfortable for me was a sports bra. A skirt because I felt like I was able to get into my body with a skirt and I wasn't restricted. <sighs> Easy and effortless. That's better. Easy and effortless. That's this is easy and effortless. Yeah. <sighs> Got this. It's easy and it's effortless. It's easy and it's effortless. Where's a you have a little box of things? Oh, or everything's in this vicinity mm -hmm. that we She's need. Got a in here. Roses. I actually would like roses in them. Um yeah. is it is your contraction stop? as well as a robe, just because when I was getting out of a wet and dry environment, it was almost like a towel, warm, comfy, and all in one. But um, another thing too is I had multiple sports bras because I was getting in and out of the bathtub, so I wouldn't want to have a wet bra on in the bed. Let me just say I had a very active birthing process, and it just felt great to not be restricted to one place and then having your mind that you have to do this one thing. I don't know how people sit in this hospital bed. What do you think? When you push. No, no. But we're trying to too. Chosen Lay down and give it. And they're just so if you just All not you put your knees up. It's about to tear. Your pain, 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 your pain,
be fun. It's gonna be warm. It's a submerged water. Allow yourself mm -hmm. to feel After this, all next your one feelings. Good one. I'll try guilt or shame. Um, for me, my body naturally guided me to different places. I would not recommend to anybody on this earth to give birth on their back or to lay down in bed on their back because that's the only time that I experienced extreme discomfort. But when I was in the bath, when I was on my birthing ball, and when I was able to move around in my body into the gravity of my um, spine and my vaginal canal, I felt the most comfortable. Um, so I will then say a birthing ball. A birthing ball is super important as well because it just kind of helps get into the groove, get the movement going, but then also being comfortable. After watching Wonderful Acts and saying that she had a relevation or she had a, I would call it download, she had to actually labor. It was a process that she had to involve herself in. The contractions at this point were, I, can, I, mean, I was gripping, the, the bed rail and like gripping my friend's hand like there was no tomorrow and I was just in so much pain at this point and I thought about my friend who I knew she said she got all the way to eight centimeters and then had to get an epidural because the pain got so bad and I'm like if I am, am, am crying like a baby at four there is no way that I can make it to ten if my friend had to tap out at eight like I'm about to tap out now and I could feel my stomach that my baby had still not dropped. Like she was still sitting really high in my stomach and the baby has to drop into the pelvic area before the birth. And I'm like, at this rate, I got to get an epidural. And if I get an epidural, more than likely, I'm probably going to have a C-section because the baby's still sitting high. And when you're laying flat in the bed, like I said, it's not giving the baby room to drop because you're not able to like walk around and use gravity. So I finally looked to my husband and I'm like... I can't do this and that was the first time that I said it out of my mouth but then God but then God so literally I sense the Holy Spirit tell me Alyssa you have to labor labor is an active word you have to participate like you have to participate in what I'm doing you can't just lay here like I couldn't just lay there and let the baby come out it was like no you need to get up you need to labor Faith without works is dead. We are called to be co-laborers with Christ. And literally like all these scriptures just came to my mind about how God literally like uses man in order to see the supernatural things happen on the earth. Like with Moses parting the Red Sea, Moses had to lift up his staff and then God parted the sea. And there's just so many stories about God who steps in to intervene when our works match up with our faith. So literally I told my husband, I was like, look, I can't do this, but I got to get up. I gotta get out the bed. I got to labor. Like I have to. I was like, it was just like this this Holy Spirit conviction. Like I have to get up. I have to labor. So we call the nurse in and we're like, nurse, I gotta get out this bed. The nurse is like, oh no, baby's in distress. Woo woo. I'm like, go call my doctor. <laughs> so the doctor comes in. I'm like, doctor, I have to get out the bed. I have to labor. My doctor's like, okay. And through watching that video and then going through my process, I very much resonated with that because. There was a lot of movement that I wanted to do. I loved being able to move, being able to fill my body. And through that, I found a comfortable place for me and a comfortable way to go through my contractions. And that was on my feet, feeling grounded in a sumo squat position. The next thing I will say is salt. Think about salt. When you get into the ocean, you have beautiful, clear, beautiful skin. Um, if you have any acne, any cuts or anything like that, gargling salt for your throat, um, salt is just kind of like the cure of everything. Postpartum, within 48 hours, minimally or maximum, find it in yourself to take a salt bath and put a whole bag of salt. Invest into getting just bags and bags and bags and bags of salt. Get like three bags of salt. Postpartum, sit in a salt bath for 20 minutes every single day if you have the energy to, and I promise your yoni will. <laughs> Salt, it's important, it's essential, I did it. My midwife told me a story um, about one of a mother she was assisting and she gave birth in the ocean and after she gave birth, she took care of her baby and she cleaned herself up and did what she had to do. She went back into the ocean for two hours. She said, my midwife said that her yoni looked like she hadn't even given birth. I took that, I ran with it postpartum, took a lot of soft baths and there was no pain, no discomfort, um, no soreness, no anything. And I felt like my yoni was like back 
to normal within like three days. So lots and lots and lots of salt bath, salt soaking, 20 minutes every single day for three to seven days and you will thank me for that. So with that, I will also say herbs. I did a herbal postpartum bath. Um, it kind of just depends on what you're called to. There are some like by the book basics or like uh, postpartum um, bath soaks that you can do, but I was definitely called to work with different herbs, but doing a postpartum bath to cleanse and help your uterus tone back up and, and get to where it needs to be while also allowing your body to release is definitely important and will definitely help you in the healing process or definitely helped me in the healing process. Another thing is set up an altar space if you feel called to do that, if, if that's something that resonates with you. But I personally had different things in my altar space. Um, if you have a loved one that has transitioned that is really important to your birthing process, keep something that is high energy that is theirs around. Get some flowers, get things that symbolize life, get things that symbolize peace, get things that symbolize just fruitfulness and abundance and set it up around where you think that you are going to birth or even just in your house. When I actually found out that I was in my birthing process, I actually cleaned up my entire bathroom and I wanted to get rid of all of the clutter that was in my bedroom, bathroom, and in like my little living room area. Kai definitely is more so of the person who sets up the space. So we had just different things from his background and from my background around our bathtub and around our environment, just so that although we know that we called for our loved ones to hold space for us, we also had physical things there so that they can hold space for us on a tangible level as well. So with that being said, one thing that I wish I would have done was saved the birth water that I had in a mason jar and held it on an altar is something I didn't do but somebody told me about it after the fact and I wish I would have known about it before because I thought that would have been something beautiful to do and yeah so if that looks like crystals if that looks like physical things t-shirts um, necklaces things from your loved ones set up a space for your baby as you would for yourself um, the next thing is a scale the scale was important because for me having a home birth, I wanted to track, and obviously it's important for, for everyone, but you track your baby's weight and height. And the weight was especially important because I was breastfeeding, so I wanted to make sure that my baby was gaining the right amount of weight so that I knew that my baby was getting what my baby needed for breastfeeding. Um, it was something that I never, I mean, breastfeeding was something that I was definitely in the dark about and I didn't even realize how much I didn't know about breastfeeding until I was going through it. But um, getting a scale, the measurements on the scale is great because you can track your baby and weigh your baby right after you give birth. Trash bags, lots of trash bags, lots of things releasing, lots of wiping up of things. Like I said, I was very much an active birthing process woman who just wanted to go many places, so trash bags. Lots of wiping, <laughs> lots of releasing, and trash bags. A diaper. I had postpartum pads, which is definitely on the list as well, but depending on how much you release, sometimes you get up to go to the bathroom and you're releasing on such a intense level that is just probably for your best interest to probably wear a diaper for like two days depending on how you release um that's something that was very much unexpected for me because i didn't expect to release as much but i also prayed and my intention was for me to take on things that came from kai's side or my side that did not belong to my baby for me to release it rather than it to go to my baby's bloodline i feel like that was just a manifestation of me just releasing a lot of stuff that no longer served me no longer serve him and definitely does not serve my baby um there's other women who don't release as much but next time i will probably have a diaper <laughs> another thing is putting a beanie on your baby literally very soon after birth obviously it kind of depends on the temperature of your house but it is something that's important and you should definitely do it so that your baby continues to stay warm it was all wrapped up in your womb in a warm place and now it's out where there's air conditioning and wind and weather and things like that so um definitely having a beanie a very nice blanket and also towels to clean off your baby next this is kind of like postpartum after you've given birth prep lots of food snacks things that you can grab because for me personally i did not want to leave the bed so having cut fruit by the edge of the bed 
was something that was super essential for me. Also having a smoothie kind of prepped as well as a straw. I let Kai know as well as my mom know what I wanted. I let them know kind of like what my birth plan was, what kind of things that I wanted to eat, why I wanted to eat. And I had a lot of green boost, which is super high in vitamin K. Vitamin K is great for blood clotting and because obviously I'm releasing a lot, it was something that I wanted in my smoothie, along with some sea moss to regenerate my vitamins and nutrients and things like that. But meal prepping myself, smoothies, cut fruit, as well as having bottles of water nearby were super essential for me. I will also say that I didn't know I was hungry until it was a little bit too late. So even if you're not hungry, try to eat something, especially if you're breastfeeding, because I soon learned that if I don't eat, my baby don't eat, and if my baby don't eat, then I'm not sleeping, and then it just kind of comes down to a trickle effect of a lot of negative things. So taking that oxytocin high, but make sure to rejuvenate your body with things that are going to be nutrient dense so that you can give you and your baby exactly what it needs. So another thing postpartum that I wish I would have had more of was button up shirts because yes, I wanted to do skin to skin and I wanted to breastfeed and I didn't really have shirts that were comfortable to do that. I just wish I would have had more button ups. Doing the skin to skin and have, being braless was great, but then when you're wearing a shirt, it's like you have to pull it up and then it's under your neck and then it's on the baby's face and things like that. So it's not something that anyone ever told me. It's kind of something that I learned as I went, but for the first week, all I wanted to do was wear a button up so I can keep my baby close to activate that skin to skin and more milk production and then also be accessible with the boob and then get yourself some pumping and nursing bras as well. I wanted to exclusively breastfeed. I didn't want to pump at all and I got a mastitis on day seven. So one thing I wish I would have done is I wish I would have known the importance of um, releasing the milk from your breast because if you get it blocked, you get mastitis, and then it's just no fun. I talk about mastitis in every single video because it was such a traumatic thing for me. So getting a bra, once again, getting back on track, getting a bra that was a nursing bra as well as a pumping bra is something that I wish I would have had that I did not have, as well as a button-up shirt to promote the skin to skin and then easy access to the boob, and then skirts. I feel like skirts were just, for me, it was easy to flow in. We chose a lotus birth. And lotus birth is a whole lot of discipline, so make sure you have a lotus bowl as well as lotus self-care. So if that looks like herbs, if that looks like salt, if that looks like a certain water to cleanse the, uh, your placenta with, make sure that you have all of that prepped and ready to go. And keep everything in a box. One thing that somebody told me, I think it might have been my midwife, is don't set up your things where you think you're going to give birth because more times than not, people are like, you know what, I want to have a water birth and end up giving birth in the bed. And then because you put everything out and you set it up, you have to move everything individually where if you keep it in a box, your birth partner can just move the box to wherever you go. One thing that my midwife shared is don't be attached to giving birth to one place because you might be called to do it somewhere else or your baby might tell you to give birth somewhere else and then you're kind of kind of carry the disappointment of wanting to do something a certain way giving birth at home is definitely it all of my children will be birthed at home after I gave birth I said I am ready for 19 more kids that has definitely changed now because you know babies are real sleep is different and interesting and breastfeeding was definitely interesting as or is definitely interesting now but yes those are all of the things that I used or I wanted to use. To be honest, it might sound like a very long list of things, but a lot of these things are things that you have just naturally at your house. And like I said, I was very active. So if you're not jumping in and out of the pool or in and out of the bath, if you're somebody who just wants to limit yourself to one area, then obviously this list is much shorter. But allow yourself flow and allow your body and your baby to lead you to where you need to go. Listen to your body, honestly. My baby told me exactly what to do and he showed up and he showed out for me. So yes, that's it for my video on all of the things that I needed or the things that I used or the things that I wish I would have had during my home birth. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you use or anything that made you feel better about having your home birth, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload. Peace.